Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Worldwide Weather Watch. Today is March 5th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Got the continent of Africa right there. There's Madagascar. You can see an old tropical system there now moving off into the westerlies. Here is the intertropical convergent zone, and you see the thunderstorm activity across the interior portions of Africa. They get an awful lot of lightning out there. Now taking a look here at Australia. So you can see the sun is starting to rise over Alfred out there, and this is going to bring some torrential rain rainfall to portions of Australia and then it'll drag across some of the inland areas and eventually get caught up in the westerlies and you can see New Zealand off here to the actually off to the east of it there north and east I guess that would be in the southern hemisphere actually no it'd be south and east because we are in the southern hemisphere and this is the south pole so anyway taking a look here at a uh, tropical cyclone Alfred and again it's going to be kind of a slow moving system it's going to have some a very strong winds with it as well so uh, it's been interesting watching this storm and if we take a look at this this is 24 hour precipitation and if you look to the bottom here, uh, this is the uh, precipitation amount in millimeters. So when you get to 250 millimeters, that would be 10 inches of precipitation. 25 millimeters is one inch or 2.5 centimeters. So if I put this into motion, you'll see this slow moving system there. And it's like, man, you're dropping a lot of precipitation, especially in this narrow band right across the central portion of the east coast of Australia. And it hangs out for a while. And then it really drenches some of the inland areas before it finally starts to get caught back up in the west and becomes extra tropical and gets off of the coastline there and also some monstrous ways with the system out there as well so yeah pretty active stuff there for australia and just a reminder across the southern hemisphere they are just now entering into meteorological fall across the northern hemisphere here we are now entering into meteorological spring so you know, flip this do a complete 180 with it as far as going into what season or whatever season we may be in now this is the u.s continental you can see we have a lot of winter weather advisories winter storm warnings we got blizzard warnings still in effect in the backside of this textbook mid-latitude cyclone moving up across the great lakes still a tornado watch for some portions of north carolina there but that'll be quickly moving off the coastline some high surf advisories as well and you can kind of see that tornado threat along the east coast gets up towards richmond virginia also and there is a little bit of a hail threat up across pennsylvania and some wind threat as well um, but I like showing you guys these wider maps here. I like showing you dew point temperatures. The mid side, the mid latitude cyclone is right there, and it's got this very moist air out in front of it, and that's what helps uh, spawn that severe weather threat. But you see the cold front pushing off the coastline as we go through this evening, and you can see that cold front march all the way down across the Gulf. And relatively speaking, it dries things out until, of course, the next mid latitude cyclone, the next system comes in here and starts to pull some of that Gulf moisture back out in front of it, maybe some additional severe then but not as strong a storm off into the future as we go through the weekend coming up. And one more look at our mid-latitude cyclone with very cold air wrapping back around on the north side of that. It's where the blizzard warnings are and some pretty significant snowfall. And again, this is where the severe threat was off to the south and east of the main low pressure center. Now, here we are with a precipitation anomaly across the entire planet. And you'll see some of these tropical cyclones out here. And this is the five-day running total we're looking at. So a big one coming from Madagascar, one kind of roaming out in the middle of nowhere there in the Indian Ocean. Very active tropical convergent, intertropical convergent zone there right off the coast of Brazil as well. I'll show you more on that here in a moment. If we put that into motion, you can kind of see uh, these areas that are supposed to get above average precipitation for a five-day running total. And... Global greatest one minute rainfall. I'll share some cool information like this. So greatest one minute rainfall ever recorded on planet Earth, July 4th. How's that for 4th of July? 1956, right here in the USA, Unionville, Maryland, 1.23 inches of rain in one minute. That is just insanity. I could probably dump a gallon of water into my rain gauge and it might have a tough time recording that much in one minute. That's just an intense amount of rainfall and it is the heaviest amount ever recorded in one minute. So fun stuff there. Now I want to show you something interesting here. We're back to Australia and you can see this tropical system, this is at 10,000 feet these are warmer temperatures here this is a warm core system so as this storm it's gathering its heat basically from the heat of the ocean this is different than a mid-latitude cyclone it moves over the interior areas and you kind of see how its core gets disrupted quite a bit but you can see it emerge here it's got a little bit of warmth with it still but it starts to get back down into the westerlies here and so it becomes extra tropical it starts to gain some energy by being you know that temperature gradient versus the polar regions and uh you know the equatorial regions there so it starts to go through this transition of becoming a mid-latitude cyclone 
And if I show you this here, this is the Antarctica. Same system is right there, what we just looked at. You see the warm core of that system? Watch this thing move inland there, and you see it spinning and drenching portions of eastern Australia. Then it comes roaring out back over the open water, and there it goes, and then it starts to get caught up in the westerlies. So this is the heat transfer of the planet. The Earth, you know, this big imbalance here, it wants to correct that. So what does it do? It brings it back up towards the equatorial regions. And you can see that slug of warm air try to approach the coastline of Antarctica. You know, it's tough to do so there. It's pretty well protected. But yeah, you can see it finally get absorbed back up in there and that heat gets transferred back up towards the polar regions. And then the cycle continues across the planet. But it's kind of fun to watch this. Again, we're at 10,000 feet. You can see Antarctica here and you can see this, uh, at least a slice of the tropospheric polar vortex spinning there. It would be South America over here and there's Africa and Madagascar. So if we take a look at the tropical uh, uh, Indian Ocean here, and I put this into motion, you can see I believe that is Honde moving off to the south, and then you can see the next system up. Look at these amounts of rainfall dumping on Madagascar. Pretty crazy watching this tri tropical cyclone. It being over land, it's having a tough time developing here on the European that's hot off the presses. But once it gets back out over the open water, you can see it really start to deepen. Then it takes another swipe at Madagascar there. And then again, that was that other uh, tropical cyclone there as well. This one doesn't get as close to the island out here that holds the 24 hour greatest rainfall amount in 24 hour, which is close to 72 inches. And there it is. Uh, I believe that's pronounced uh, reunion. I don't know. I guess there's a French way to pronounce that as well. Somebody can update me in the comments below. But yeah, uh, tw greatest 24 hour rainfall is just off to the east of Madagascar on an island there. And this is the Madden Julian Oscillation. So this is where we are right about now. And we're coming out of Africa off to the Indian Ocean. That's probably has something to do with the increased tropical cyclone development. The Madden Julian Oscillation is an area of tropical convection that encircles the entire planet on about a 30 to 60 day time frame. And this has big impacts on Rossby waves, troughs, and ridges that can roll all across the planet. So the Madden Julian Oscillation is closely watched by forecasters, especially with tropical when tropical weather is involved. Now, this is the Southern Oscillation Index here. So as we went through uh, 2024, we did go through uh, the El Nino, and then we're now back into positive territory here. So the atmosphere is resembling a weak La Nina right now. We're on the north side of that zero line, so we are into positive territory. So this is what's known as the Walker circulation. You measure the pressure here uh, for Tahiti versus Darwin. And so the pressure is higher here. You get to enhance the trade winds back towards the maritime continent and you get the deeper convection out here and that's what's known as La Nina and again that changes up Rossby wave and troughs and ridge configuration all the way downstream and that can be enhanced or you know or can be reduced by the Madden Julian oscillation depending on its location. But right now it's way off across Africa just starting to emerge back here over the western Indian Ocean and La Nina conditions again here. And what we're looking at is called the Walker circulation. If you want to look that up and educate yourself more on that. So sea surface temperature anomaly. It's pretty cool here on the weather bell map. You can look all the way back. We're back now in October of 2021. You can see we had a pretty significant La Nina there and we can scroll ahead towards 2022. There's September, there's December, 2022. Another La Nina there, right? Remember we had the triple dip La Nina. And then as we got into 2023, we had the El Nino and you see how things are reversed there. The warmer tongue coming off the, the coast of South America and that brings some deeper convection back out or some anomalous, anomalous convection back out over the Central Pacific. And again, that can do things like uh, bring more of a subtropical jet towards the west coast of North America, for example, bringing warmer weather to some of the west coast and whatnot. And it has, again, impacts across the planet. Um, but as we go on in towards next fall, we still have some chances of being either La Nina, neutral, or El Nino conditions here. And you can kind of see the odds on favorite right now is the neutral conditions. And so the European does this forecast. They updated it once a month and they put it out about February 5th. This one came out. And we're going to check to see, do we have March's update in? It is. It is in today since it is March 5th. And there we go. You can kind of see uh, the median is right here, probably somewhere in neutral territory as we go towards September. Are we going to head back towards a weak El Nino uh, or a neutral? Or is there even a chance we go back into, uh, you know, weak La Nina? But you can see the... The ensemble mean is probably somewhere in a warm neutral or maybe into a weak El Nino condition as we go on in through next fall. Now, 
I do like my precipitable water maps. And as I scroll through, you notice the jiggling like this is jello out here. Those are convective gravity waves moving throughout the intertropical convergent zone. And of course, you got a rainforest here out across Brazil, you know, the rainforest. And so, yeah, I like to look at that because those are outflow boundaries, a lot of thunderstorm activity going on in there. And you can look at this with lightning flash density potential on the European model, and you can see as we scroll through today and tomorrow, you can see all that convection out there. And you can kind of see how these outflow boundaries are bumping into each other and forming their bands. And then they, they move up in the air, then they collapse and they drop off another outflow boundary. And that outflow boundary will rush into another one from another storm and it'll form additional thunderstorm activity. And the process will just continue to repeat. And you can see this uh, activity go on to its nocturnal and diurnal variation here across uh, South America and Brazil as well in the rainforest. So yeah, you can see the intertropical convergence zone at work there. Um, but what else? Let's see. Season to date snow total. So there's some other cool stuff here. This is from October 1st to, 1st to now. So you can see a lot of Texas didn't get much snowfall here. But if you start to go across southeast Texas, look at that. Remember that snowstorm they had there a few weeks ago? Kind of kicking the gut there if you're across portions of Mississippi and you wanted to see snow. And right along the Gulf Coast of Louisiana, Mississippi, you got some snow. And in the interior areas, you didn't get much. It's usually not so much the case. I mean, usually these go, you know, the further north you get, you usually get more snowfall. But you can see how the vast majority of the lower 48 has gotten some snowfall. Even Seattle's gotten about 2.8 inches so far this season. So fun stuff to look at there. But anyway, hope you guys are liking the new channel here. I'll try to do these on a daily basis. No promises on that. The, um, you know, I will put my preferences towards the Pacific Northwest and the California Weather Watch channel. And as I have time, I will be doing these on a daily basis. So anyway, I'll hopefully do this again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.